Well, aloha everyone and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan, and our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy uh, Policy Forum, and that's a program of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So I'm really pleased to have my good friend, uh, Dennis Furukawa of Real Green Power on the show today. And we're gonna be talking story about Spaceship Earth. We have a problem, but we also have solutions. No good to having a problem if you don't have a solution. So in previous shows, we uh, defined the problem, uh, basically the energy problems we have in the world. And so now we've got a series of episodes where we're gonna be talking solutions. And today we're gonna be talking about uh, wastewater treatment solutions where we can save a lot of energy treating our wastewater and uh, making the best use of our resources so we're not wasting power. So uh, let's throw up the first slide and welcome to the, slow, uh, the show, uh, uh, Dennis. And I'm gonna ask Dennis to talk to us a little bit, first of all, um, about uh, what about uh, this uh, efficiency and it being the best solution. Dennis, over to you. Well, thanks, Mitch, uh, for inviting me to speak on this subject. You know, I'm really passionate about uh, uh, water efficiency, energy efficiency, and you know it all goes to the heart of sustainability. And um, uh, you know, uh, I was put on this path uh, about you know 25 years ago. I'm a uh, I've been designing for sustainability as an architect uh, for many many years, and uh, I I came to Hawaii with the idea of. Uh, starting a, a water recycling and uh, and renewable energy uh, uh, technology company, and so um, uh, through the good people at UH, uh, I got some technology that uh, was available from the technology transfer department at, at UH, uh, and um, and through some work with uh, with HNEI. Uh, we worked uh, with the Department of Energy to refine the, the technology um, and apply it for wastewater uh, treatment in sewages. It was originally designed for uh, dealing with dairy wastewater. And it's an it's a, a anaerobic digestion technology that we've, um, we've been improving and focusing on energy efficiency. So... Um, Rather than focusing just uh, uh, purely on on wastewater quality, um, the there are a number of other uh, factors that go along in wastewater treatment, and, and predominantly one of the biggest things is sludge. Sludge production through aerobic technology uh, creates um, a problem uh, that is you know odor generating. Uh, you know, solid waste handling, solid waste disposal, um, and a real big not in my backyard problem. So um, we were focused on making a uh, wastewater treatment technology that could be sited in uh, close proximity to people's, you know, uh, homes and neighborhoods. And, and so uh, we invented uh, with a a containerized wastewater treatment module that embodies our uh, the the anaerobic di digestion technology developed with uh, the cooperation of HNEI, and uh, we've packaged it. So uh, it's uh, and we've been operating these systems now for several years, and uh, in close proximity to um, to people's uh, habitations, and it, it's going pretty well. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, sludge reduction and energy savings that you uh, were able to uh, identify in the first installation, which was at the Hawaii Kai Sewage Treatment Plant. There were some really amazing results there on on those two subjects. So do you want to cover those first before we get to the modular uh, toilets uh, systems? Sure. Um, the you know the like I said the one of the the chief problems with uh, with siting sewage treatment plants and operating them is handling all of the sludge that is generated through the aerobic treatment process. 
So um, we discovered that, uh, and uh, yeah, we discovered that by putting anaerobic digestion ahead of aerobic treatment, um, you eliminate the production of sludge by 80%. You reduce that, that sludge production by 80%. And it right. has a tremendous advantage. Uh, and uh, it really doesn't come at any energy cost at all. In fact, it saves 50% uh, on, on the energy just on the energy savings in aerobic treatment. So uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't even account for you know, what to do with the sludge, which is a giant problem that we're having in, in Oahu. I think they're talking about closing the landfill. Yeah, it has to be trucked off to the landfill, and nobody likes uh, them trucking it through their neighborhood, and our landfill is getting filled up. So if we can reduce the uh, sludge by 80%, uh, that, that's uh, pretty huge in uh, anybody's uh, calculation. Because you have to have these big diesel trucks. They're burning diesel to truck it out there. Um, so it's a pretty uh, energy-intensive uh, effort just to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, um, and you know, there's another factor, which is actually it's it's known as sludge dewatering. So you have to squeeze the water out of all of this sludgy, wet stuff. Right. And right. traditionally, it's been done by letting out a slurry of of oh, you know smelly black uh, um, you know sludge out onto a confined piece of land where where it dries out under the sun. Uh, and that attracts flies, and it, it's a real, it's you know, dusty, horrible problem. We've been able to put, you know, operate our modular wastewater treatment systems um, and not have to handle any sludge. So uh, the, the wow. if somebody has to handle a certain amount of sludge at the back end, but uh, through our our systems, uh, we are able to um, to minimize that whole whole process such that it can be vacuumed up in a small truck and hauled away. So well, let's uh, go on to the next slide of the uh, modular sanitation systems uh, that you developed. So tell us the story behind that and uh, why is it there and uh, what are the energy savings and more uh, just as important, what are the cost savings, for example, to the uh, city and county of Honolulu? All right, well, so um, this is a, 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 a camp for uh, it's a, a tradition, transitional housing or temporary housing. It's it's for people who are homeless, who are houseless, and uh, uh, they're under the care of the city and county um, at uh, a facility of Run Sand Island, and um, <clears throat> they were formerly served by porta potties. Uh, they didn't have a uh, 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 shower facilities, uh, permanent shower facilities, um, nor permanent toilets. Uh, and that was an, an expensive, expensive proposition. They were spending about $30,000 a month to provide sanitation for about 100 uh, homeless persons. The, uh, the solution was to put a modular treat wastewater treatment system on site um, and to recycle the water that was coming out of the, um, those, those new bathroom systems and eliminate the wastewater, the, I mean, the, the porta potties. So um, uh, that's what we did. It was uh, it, 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 the, the project cost about $600,000. Um, but if you're spending $30,000 a month, uh, uh, then the payback period on this is just around, you know, two and a half years. So um, the uh, the system is is it has been operating for about three years, um, and uh, it has flush toilets and uh, and and showers inside. the The water from the showers uh, is uh, is being used uh, to irrigate some gardens. In this slide here, you can see the the bathroom layout. And uh, and the gardens that absorb the the treated waters, uh, and so this was a project that was funded by uh, the, the the city and county with uh, grants from the the state as well. So, 
So I just like to put in a comment, like I was out there when it first opened and uh, there was a lady that uh, I was talking to, one of the residents there, and she was talking to another lady and she was saying, wow, she said, this is just like being at a really nice hotel because they didn't have showers. They didn't have a place where they could wash their hands. And if you look at that slide, you can see that it's a beautiful system for them. And so, you know, it's, uh, you know, as opposed to, I mean, everybody's been to a porta potty and knows how awful they are and smelly. And this was just like a total step up for these uh, residents. And they really, really appreciated it. And, and I'm sure appreciate it today. Uh, and um, it, I, so we're, we're working to put similar systems in for harbors at the at the state small harbors so there's one on maui and there's one on Kauai that we're we're under the the engineering permitting process right now and where are these uh, built uh, dennis uh so they're 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 a combination of uh of Various, uh, we, we have some sources on the mainland and we bring the parts here and we assemble them on Sand Island. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think you have a local guy on Sand Island who actually assembles the uh, containers, yes? Yes, there's a company called uh, uh, Container Storage Company Hawaii and uh, they're really great team members, uh, you know, we work together to do containerized, uh, you know, solutions like, for instance, these bathrooms. So not all of the systems that 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 you know require containerized bathrooms uh, require on-site treatment. There are a lot of things that we're working on for the prisons, for example, so isolation facilities. But uh, we're we're slowly getting um, uh, some opportunities together where we're uh, looking at more remote applications for our, our modular. So what's, what, what's, what's been the feedback from the, the uh, city and county? Um, how do they feel about this project? Uh, no complaints so far, which is a good thing, you know, uh, with all of, you know, the, uh, it's really, um, I think it's taken a while for people to, um, to, be comfortable with the fact that that uh, uh, this is a, like a septic system. It's not like you know a municipal sewer system. So you 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 have to treat these things like you do uh, you know your own household septic system. It, it benefits from that sort of level of care. Um, uh, the um, yeah the the proclivity for people to use to put non-biodegradable things in the toilets uh, so you know all you listeners out there right those flushable wipes they um are devastating for the sewers it's costing you know communities the state uh untold millions of dollars a year to take those things out of the sewers it, yeah so 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 if you're looking at saving money just a simple thing like that that change the way you do things. You don't just take this so-called flushable wipe, which if you can't even rip it apart, they're right. they maybe on plastic mesh or something in them, and they're impossible to do it. You just throw them in the toilet. I mean, come on, you know, uh, millions of dollars. That's your taxpayers' dollars uh, going to be able to have to, uh, you know, unclog the sewer system. So that's a tremendous waste of energy and money. And we're all talking about solutions here. So the solution is, as Dennis said, if you can't eat it, don't throw it down the toilet. Yeah. I think that we've identified, right, a, a major way that we can apply this kind of solution to, right, to solving big energy costs and, and, and to solve, you know, wastewater problems uh, or reduce the wastewater problems for the state and the in city and county um, that, so let's throw up the next slide and is that and we can talk about that it's a really a brilliant idea go um, for it so 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 you know, the the as many people know the the sewer systems in in honolulu that serves Honol, serve honolulu are like woefully um uh 
plagued with all sorts of problems. And one of the biggest problems is that they're trying to gather uh, the wastewater from far corners of the South Shore and feed them to the, um, the wastewater treatment plant over on Sand Island. And um, the 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 for you know the the energy that's required to pump that water from you know Aina Haina and uh, and from uh, uh, you know Diamond Head and Waikiki all the way across. I mean all, these 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 pipes are uh, you know below sea level for most of the way, uh, right? I mean the they're they're, they're a big cause of pollution and it takes a tremendous amount of energy. And once it gets to the wastewater treatment plant, that water just goes right straight into the ocean um, and right. contributing to pollution. Now, if we can put wastewater treatment plants that, are, that produce recycled water um, and reuse that recycled water for irrigation purposes within the the, the the neighborhood essentially that the, that that wastewater was generated in, then that's going to reduce all of the problems uh, at the existing wastewater treatment plants, and it's going to um, increase our ability to uh, to recycle and reuse water. And um, uh, I'm going to say that you know we're putting this into practice personally uh, ourselves uh, in a project. What this is, this is a neighborhood. This is a community scaled wastewater treatment infrastructure that produces recycled water out of all of the wastewater in the, in the community. And, and what we've done here is actually we've scaled up the whole idea of the, the wastewater treatment systems that we put in at the homeless camp. We've split the gray water from the black water um, so the black water is from toilets and from kitchens. So only that water gets treated in the traditional uh, sewage treatment plant. The other forms of wastewater are gray, are uh, referred to as gray water, and those uh, waters can be recycled on on each home site. So uh, there's a code that allows for gray water systems uh, on on private property, uh, and we take advantage of that uh, to recycle all of the shower water, all of the laundry water, all of the, you know, the, the, the water that is generated in the home that is not, right, septic sewage water or, you know, uh, or full of food. Um, so, uh, the, and, and, and for the water that is being treated in the, as sewage, we're treating that to the highest uh, rating. It's called R1, recycled water, which allows that water to be used um, in, in all forms of irrigation. So uh, uh, what, this, what this allows us to do is to completely eliminate the wastefulness of water. Um, and it actually barely comes at any energy cost uh, at all because the volume of gray water is such a large fraction of the total amount of wastewater that a house generates that if you're reducing the amount of water that's going to the sewage system by 60%, uh, that's a 60% savings, right? 60% uh, savings in, in volume, 60% savings in energy costs, 60% 60, 60 savings in, in all metrics. Um, so uh, it's a it's a higher front end investment in terms of right the the, the hardware that we're using, uh, but we're getting a lot of bang for the buck in terms of uh, energy savings and um, uh, you know being environmental stewards and, and and achieving sustainability. Well, also we we have a a, a potable water problem developing here in Hawaii now. Our aquifers are. I don't want to say drying up, but they're being used up. Uh, some of them are, are being polluted, by, for example, by the Red Hill um, disaster, and we have no idea what the effect of that's going to be. And so we need to be looking for other sources of uh, fresh water. I mean, otherwise, we're not going to be taking showers 
uh, in the future. So anything we can do to save that is also part of the energy solution because it takes energy to treat that water. As Dennis said, it takes energy to pump it through the, uh, both through the city water main and also once it's used in the sewer main back to the sewage treatment plant. So we have a solution or Dennis does, Real Green Power has a solution to do that. And so uh, let's, I wanna go back to the previous slide though, if we could, Michael. And uh, I, I wanna point out uh, the little red squares on the previous slide. Uh, that one, yeah, that, that slide. Because uh, one of the features it shows is that you collect the water where those little squares are before it gets, before it gets into the main sewage pipeline. So it's like a distributed uh, sewage uh, treatment system. So you treat it as close to the source as possible. And as Dennis said, then you can recycle the water locally on gardens and on medians, on golf courses. And you saw how lush those plants were at the Sand Island facility where they were using those to grow uh, various uh, plants. And, uh, and so you really reduce the flow of water. You're making the best use of your resources and uh, you're not wasting anything. Dennis, I've been doing a lot of talking. It's your idea. Well, you know- Tell us the, a little bit more, what have I missed? Well, um, it, the, that distributed wastewater treatment system actually also um, takes the, the nutrients that, that uh, are essentially, you know, they form pollutants in in the in the wastewater, um, and and the wastewater treatment plant makes it in a form that makes it directly available to the plant. Um, now, if we were actually going to have to take that water and 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 make it so that we could discharge it in the ocean, we would actually have to spend more energy to do that. Um, and uh, it if it ends up in the ocean it's only like adding to pollution in the ocean whereas if we can add that those nutrients to for instance the golf courses uh or farms or you know yards then people will have to spend less money on 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 fertilizer the you know so um one of the big issues that we're having uh, or you know one of these future issues is is fertilizers nitrogen you know Nitrogen, phosphorus, all of those things uh, are are commodities, and um, uh, it's it's in your wastewater, folks. It's free. I mean, if we, you know, if we just can recycle our our water and put and, it to use, so and we're pumping it out to the ocean, so that helps kill the coral. So it's got multiple benefits. Uh, we're coming, uh, we got about four minutes left. And, and before we uh, you know, get to the sign off part, um, why don't we talk a little bit about cesspools and the cesspool situation? Like for example, on the big island, uh, they have 80,000 cesspools and they've got a lot of communities that have, a, have a cesspools. But like you said earlier, they have to, they, if they use a centralized wastewater treatment plant, they'd have to pump that for miles and miles and miles, blast through rock to lay the pipe down. Tell us how this can be applied to some of these uh, smaller communities out there in a kind of, a, once again, calling on the distributed uh, wastewater treatment plant we talked about, like you're, you're talking about uh, up on the North Shore. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, it it really is uh you can apply the same technology at at a different scale so uh for instance uh, one of those 20 foot like just like the module that we use at the homeless camp that could actually serve you know eight or ten homes um if if there was a way that you know a a, a block uh, a block of homes uh, let's just say, right, they back the backyard neighbors, right? You have neighbors on the back side of your fence, right? Uh, so if you had a street with neighbors, right, uh, with the, their backyards touching you, if everybody had a sewage ejector pump that went along the back fence line to a, cent a, a neighborhood wastewater treatment plant, and that neighborhood right. wastewater treatment plant sent the treated, recycled water 
back to, right, the homes in the form of a garden hose bib thing, the purple pipe, right, for garden irrigation. Um, you, could, you could have, uh, right, a pretty simple solution right there that, that people could uh, eliminate their cesspools with. Yeah, and we have a big problem because the EPA is, uh, what do we call that when the, the, uh, the state is under uh, notice that if they don't do it, they're going to start getting fined, like big bucks? Um, I will say this, that, uh, that one of the big uh, issues moving forward for a lot of people is going to be that, that getting a septic system as a replacement for the cesspool uh, it it um, uh, may require what's called a, an evaporation trans uh, transpiration, uh, you know, raised bed uh, uh, facility like a garden uh, that's that that uh, that's specially designed and, and allocated for that that purpose. Um, and so that's an elevated system that a septic system in your home's not not made to do so. so that's pretty expensive it sounds expensive as heck so here once again we have a, a solution that only saves energy but it saves you money i mean how, how great is that so we've got about a minute left and uh, it's time to wrap it up um so let's have my slide seven on because i have my little pitch that i always like to give so basically uh what i like to tell everybody is our world is fragile our future energy needs are great, and it's time for those of political power. All you politicians out there, pay attention to this. You've got the political power. You were sent there to do a job, and here we have a solution. And uh, why don't you run with, pick up the ball, get hold of Dennis, and he can tell you how we can implement this in uh, our communities and save money, water, coral, our water quality, uh, surfing spots would be a better place to surf. And then you uh, people with financial strength, all you billionaires that live here in Hawaii, that just, I, I don't know what you're doing with your billions of dollars, but you could be putting, putting it to good use here in Hawaii. So now's the time to make a difference. So get out there and make a difference for not only the, the, our community, but for the world, because this is a model that can be applied throughout the, certainly throughout the Pacific Islands who are all having problems with wastewater. And this kind of technology would be really good made in Hawaii, made at the University of Hawaii itself. So the University of Hawaii has, uh, is solving today's problem. And Dennis has got uh, a, a license to that technology. He's applied it, he's demonstrated, it works. He's got the data to show it works. Now's the time to get on with it. And uh, let's throw up the last slide, which is how you can contact Dennis and uh, start the ball rolling. So let's not just stand around and say, oh, gee, that's great. Let's do something about it. You got to do it. So Dennis, final word from you, and I'll shut up. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, it's nice to have somebody, uh, you know, leading the charge. So. Hallelujah. Okay, well, that, uh, that's our show for today. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks uh, with another show on Hawaii, the state of clean energy with your host, me, Mitch Ewan. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.